It's sometimes the smallest slip up that can land you in the ER fighting for your life. Has anyone here ever been doing some handiwork? You're around the house, happen to hold a screw in your mouth for just a second. Anyone ever done that? Sure. <laughs> well, a man in LA recently did that, but then accidentally swallowed the screw and then aspirated it straight into his lungs. Yeah. And that happens to be where our good friend, Dr. Raj Dasgupta, comes into the story. <laughs> Sir, to save the day. I think so. I back. think so. Thank you very much. This guy really screwed himself. Oh, <laughs> I like that one. That was funny. That was really funny. So, look at this the screw. It's not smooth like a coin, it's very, very sharp. And because he aspirated that, or said it went into the lungs, is that not only can it be damage going in, but damage when you're taken mm -hmm. out. You could hurt the airway, it could cause bleeding. If you leave it there, there's infections. And he was coughing up a storm in the ER. So you know what we need to do to take it out? We gotta paralyze him. And when you paralyze him, he can't breathe. So we had to intubate him through this endotracheal tube through the vocal cords. Then from there, we had to take my trusty bronchoscope, which is gonna be right here. It's gonna be fiber optic with the big TV. It goes through the ET tube. And finally, we get the screw. Now here's the trick. Look at the length of the screw. It's gonna be greater than the diameter of the cord, so I can't pull it out. So we had to take out the breathing tube that he needs to breathe while holding on to the screw. And when it comes back, we had to put the tube back in because he's still paralyzed. But the good news is, is that he did great, a little embarrassed, but look at all you have to go through by putting that screw in the mouth, I'm telling you. Well, and it's, yeah. you know, a lot of things, if the screw had been swallowed into his stomach, yep. in most cases, Yes, things can happen, but in most right. cases, that has an outlet. The lungs yeah. do not. No, it needs to get taken out. You could have recurrent pneumonias, you could connect things to the esophagus, and unintentional choking is the fourth leading cause of death. And everyone forgets that. When you have a foreign body aspiration, it's not, when it goes to the upper airways, the larynx, the trachea, the vocal cords, you could get no oxygen. That's called asphyxiation. You could be unconscious and you can die. So the takeaway here is, if you're working, don't don't put these in your mouth. Right. And keep these away from kids. And yet, because the kids' airway is uh, even smaller. They love yep. putting everything in their mouth. And pediatrics compared to adults, I mean adults, their right airway is more steeper than the left. And kids, yep. they can aspirate in both lungs. And on top of that, that's why we're chasing our kids around. Don't put that in your mouth. We see aspiration all the time in adults. It could be food, people with strokes. So this is very common, unfortunately, when we see this. And if you swallow something and it goes down your esophagus, you are not gonna have these massive coughing fits that right. go, go, won't go away. And the way you know it's in the wrong spot is if you continue to have coughing spell, yeah. coughing spell, coughing spell, yep. coughing spell, you gotta get yourself to the ER. Of course. Th those, because I've seen this before, yeah. where people will wait a few hours. Right. Like, well, I kept trying to drink water, but water's not gonna yeah. help And then when in you that look, case. When they look back at the situation, like this was the exact instant they, they identified it when it happened. I agree, you don't wanna wait till you're coughing up blood or getting a pneumonia or anything like that before you go there. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dr. Raj. Yeah the most interesting pulmonologist in the world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. We always love having you on. More to come.